Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. This is the series in which we take... Uh, which series is it again? Is this career mode? Yeah, I think this is career mode, isn't it? So this is the series where we travel to different planets in Kerbal Space Program career mode. And for the past two episodes, we've been attempting to conquer Eve with very little success. Now, I think this lack of success has mainly come from the fact that I didn't really sit down and consider the problem thoughtfully before going into it. And so, after recording the last episode, I sat down and I considered the problem thoughtfully before going into it, and decided... Eh, let's go somewhere else. Let's go to Drez. <laughs> because why not? Eve is a challenge. Eve is a challenge, I'd like to say, for perhaps the finale of this series. It's certainly the most difficult planet to land on and return from, and so I'd like to do it and save it for last. Because currently, currently we have the technology to do it, but doing so with our current level of technology is going to be quite tedious. And in fact it already has been quite tedious. So in particular there's one type of technology I'd like to be able to have before we actually go there, and that is the Aerospike engine. So in order to get the Aerospike, I decide, let's go do some science, and instead of going to EVE again, we're going to go out to Drez. Now this is the Colossal Launcher, and part of the problem with EVE, I think, was rooted in this. The Colossal Launcher, which I have touted as being amazing, incredible. It's a really nice, big, chunky launch stage, and that's good! No, it's not. It really isn't. This launcher has had nothing but problems ever since it was first created. It's had fuel tanks detaching, it's had engines wobbling massively and destroying, it's... Oh, it's horrible. So, Bob decides to get out and look underneath, or it might be Bill, one of the two, decides to look at the engines and, and inspect them, to see if anything was going to go wrong before the ship took off. Jebediah, meanwhile, is getting quite bored, so Jebediah decides that he can't really be bothered to wait for Bob to get back up and into his command module. So, being the crazy captain he is... Jebediah decides to detach the command module to throttle up the engines after applying the advanced SAS and to set off without him. Unfortunately, Bob was still underneath the rocket at the time the engine started. I wonder if he's still alive. Probably not. So, here we have the Colossal Launcher. Again, it is being given a mighty payload to lift. I've, I essentially took what the EVE lander version we had in the last episode, and then stuck a command pod and some signs on top of it. Unfortunately, as you can see, the, te the telltale signs are here again. It's broken. Again. This launch stage is terrible. I'm going to retire it and create a new one. It's absolutely rubbish. So in fact, we'll actually see the new one later in this video. Yeah, you can tell that the top of the, the top levels of all the fuel tanks aren't level, and this means that the fuel tanks have detached, meaning that three of the engines run out before the other, or before the rest. So before that happens, in an attempt to carry on without them, I detach prematurely and start up the next stage. Now, this has cost us a few Delta V, but the actual rocket itself would probably have disintegrated if I had tried to burn minus those three engines. So it makes sense to have gone ahead without it anyway. And getting higher into orbit, we managed to use this stage to get us nearly out of the atmosphere before they run out. And then finally detaching that stage, we have our mighty nuclear conglomeration, which is also terrible. A single nuclear engine by itself works quite well. It's a very, 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 very effective interplanetary engine. A chemical rocket that uses up, you know, it's not majorly efficient. ISP of 800 compared to 390 of the, say, LV-909. But it is so efficient as to be able to transfer two planets using minimal fuel. You know, something like an ion engine is perhaps more efficient, but... Nuclear engines have got the thrust to weight ratio to kind of beat ions hands down. So, what I missed commentating just then was the fact that nuclear engines, whilst being fantastic on their own, are actually terrible in large groups. Really are. 
That was an entire massive tank, plus extra tanks on top, and the nuclear engines burnt through it without giving us any real delta-v change. Because, though their thrust to weight ratio may be better than ion engines, it is still pretty bad. And so, we carry on and we're now using up the lander. But this is okay, right? Because we're going out to Drez, we're not going out to Eve. Well, Drez is further away than Eve, and we're still going to have to slow down when we get there, and it's all going to be horrible. And now you've dropped your landing legs, congratulations, Harvey. <clears throat> you can tell I wasn't... I'm not being particularly good at the game. <laughs> Frankly, I'm being bad at the game. And as we'll see in just a few moments... Uh, that actually doesn't have a bearing on what's about to happen in a few moments, but what is about to happen in a few moments is a bug. And it's a bug that I've encountered many times before. Let's take a closer look. You can see the engine start burning and the entire pack starts to inch its way up the nozzles of the stage above it. See? Keep watching, keep watching, see it? I cut the engines as soon as I noticed this happening, which is a remarkably quick reaction time, but it's too late and the entire thing disintegrates. That happens a lot. I don't know any way to stop it once it's happened, other than to cut the engines as quickly as possible, but you can prevent it by using struts, I'm told. So if that happens to you, there you go. Just use loads of struts. So, forget the Colossal Launcher. Just forget it. The Colossal Launcher is terrible. Let's use something a bit better. Now, we went out to Val in this series not too long ago, and it was a mission that went remarkably well. We used a launch stage that was pretty much brute force, followed by a very, very weak one atomic engined transfer stage, followed with a lander that we custom built to suit Val. And it worked pretty damn well. I have to say so, it definitely did. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I view that this is probably the best ship we've built in this series to date. It's so good that we are going to use it to go instead of to Val, to Drez. So we launch up, the outside ring of tanks get dropped once as soon as they run out, which takes a remarkably large amount of time. They are really quite efficient, those skipper engines. I've replaced the skipper engines that were on the inside with big mainsail engines because, hey, they're the more typical engines to use whilst launching. And as you just saw then, I fluffed up my launch a bit and got distracted, and actually ended up burning into way higher orbit than necessary. So rather than circularizing that orbit, I decide, you know what, our phase angle is there, it's roughly in the right place, let's just carry on burning in this direction. The ejection angle isn't efficient, it isn't perfect, but it does work remarkably well. And so, I just use that engine, I use that transfer trajectory off the cuff, and it actually manages to be okay. We start bending out now using the vastly reduced amount of thrust from a mainsail to an atomic engine, but after what feels like no time at all, we get something very close to an encounter. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a complete lie. That took about an hour to get that encounter. Drez is really small, and it's out in the middle of nowhere. It felt like it took an hour, it probably didn't take an hour, but it felt like it, certainly. It was took a very, very, very long time. But, eventually, after I don't know how many hours streaming, we managed to get out to Drez. And now, I am visited by parents. But I'm streaming at the same time, so I don't simply want to pause the game, as that would be quite boring. And, hey, lo and behold, we have this 20-minute burn, what's that, 30-minute burn to do? Something like a 30-minute burn, which even with 4 times time acceleration is still going to take us like 7.5 minutes. So I set it up, get as close as I can without waiting too long. Actually, ideally I'd wait until it was about 15 minutes away, but I think for some reason I've decided to restart. Oh no, I've actually started burning an hour away. I'm not entirely sure why I did that. Oh well. Seconds turn into minutes, and minutes turn into hours. As I'm talking with my parent who has come in to talk to me, with one hand furiously monitoring the keyboard to make sure that our periapsis is staying. Those hours turn into days, and those days turn into weeks, and the weeks turn into years, but finally, finally we start to see a change in our velocity. Those years turn into decades, until... Just as we're about to make contact with the periapsis, the trajectory closes into an orbit. 
Oh, man. That burn was so long, we must have used up all our fuel. Uh, no, actually. We've not even used half of our fuel in this stage. Which is why I really like our Val ship. And it's one of the reasons why it's the best ship we've designed to date. It's got loads of fuel and a really efficient engine exactly where that engine needs to be. And what's cool is that I didn't even modify this lander at all. I slapped on some extra science and it turns out that this lander would probably be okay. So, swapping to the lander, decoupling it from our transfer stage, making sure the Kerbals are still in here and haven't popped out to get some biscuits, we prepare to go down onto the surface of Drez. Now, I've been to Drez before. Drez, I've been there once in a video, twice in my entire Kerbal Space Program lifetime. And the Kerbal Space Program video was Mission to Drez, one of my most successful videos to date. And that was very fun. Unfortunately, <clears throat> I didn't quite match that one in this mission, because in that one, we took along a whole lander rover thing, and there was a lot of drama down on the surface, and, and then we had to do a, a proper escape kind of return, because our plan went wrong, and oh, it was dramatic, and it was very exciting. And if you would like to go see that one, I can recommend it, because it was, as I've said, one of my most popular videos, and therefore it is quite good. So, go search the YouTube for that. Mission to Drez. It's probably near the front page of YouTube or something. My thumbnails are quite characteristic of me, so, you know. Although, uh, having said that, my old thumbnails were just impact font. Whereas now I try and do it a bit more classy. To suit the jazz that I oh so like to listen to. Anyway, bring it down. We use IVA mode for the touchdown. There it is! I like IVA mood. Mood? I'm in the mood to like IVA mood, because IVA mode is just fantastic, and it is also useful. I'm glad that it has that functionality, that it is actually useful and gives you more calculations and more statistics and more readings and measurements than you get just in the normal map view. Because you get a radar altimeter, which tells you your actual height above the ground, rather than your height above sea level. As you can see, our altimeter up here on the normal screen is saying 1,139 meters. Which is way above what, you know, we're, we're currently at zero meters, surely. No, it's height above sea level. Anyway, now we're down on the ground, we can do some science with all of our modules. Having said all of them, we actually do our science with some of them. We're going to not do it with some of them because we want to stay and try and get a wide range of biomes. Meaning that when we return to orbit, the plan is that we shall perform science in orbit as well. No point doing extra repeats on the ground when we already have so many. So, bringing out of the Kerbals at long last, Jebediah and... Uh, I've forgotten which Kerbal it was. Oh well, never mind. Jebediah will place a flag, and like he always does, he'll place it the wrong way round! He can never place it the way I want him to place it, it's really quite frustrating. Oh well. What are we going to call this place? What are we going to call it indeed? Well, we have a theme of, like, jumps, like we have baby steps and minuscule trotting or something. So, you know, we might as well stick to that kind of theme. Anyway. Though it took these brave two Kerbals their sweet time to plot a trajectory here, Jeb and... Co... I can't quite remember what Kerbal it is. Jeb and Co have successfully... Uh, pushed the frontiers of Kerbal exploration in from Val. Well done, lads! You've really helped science. You've gone to a body that we've already been to before and you've... Yeah, w w well done. So anyway, after a brief commercial break, we return. I say brief, it was literally like half a second of me, you know, doing that. Aren't you lucky to have commercial breaks that are so short? Crikey. Anyway, Jebediah Kerman, or no, this is Ko actually. Jebediah Kerman's already got back in, I believe. This is Ko. Ko goes around all the science modules that we've activated, trying to get science from them. Because of course you don't, actu you don't actually have to land your craft in order to recover the science. That is a fallacy. You can do the science on the science modules, and then go up to them with your Kerbal and take the data. 
Now, for the majority of scientific experiments, this will render the module unusable again, but for our temperature and our gravioli and barometers and accelerometers, you can take science from them any number amount of times without it destroying them. So it's quite a useful mechanic, meaning you don't have to take your entire ship back with you. You can just return the command module. Or even just the Kerbal, because the Kerbals actually can store science, I believe. Although that's only until they get into a command module. So if you could somehow build a Kerbal a parachute so that he wouldn't get into a command module, but he would still land back a Kerbin, then you could not do it without... Then you could do it without a command module. Something interesting to note. Anyway, we do some time warping and do some time warping again, and eventually we are in the correct position for us to burn upwards towards the heaven, leaving behind our hop, skip, and a leap flag, which is quite nice. Hop, skip, and a leap. A lot of uh, plosive consonants there. And we get up into orbit, and we are about to rendezvous with our craft. And then all that remains is to go home, to recover our precious science, and to unlock the aerospace... Uh, no, the Aero Spike engine. Indeed. So, bringing ourselves up to orbit, we are just a bit too fast, so we have to actually extend our apparatus over the altitude that our transfer craft is orbiting at, but no matter, because we do so, and then we warp over to it, and in no time at all it feels like we are ready to dock. Unfortunately, I left it a bit late to start doing my burns, and we skim right past it. We have to cancel out 100 meters per second of relative velocity before we can actually get even close to docking. So bringing it back up, back up. Actually, interestingly enough to note, what I have currently, the ship that I'm currently using, probably has sufficient delta V to go back on itself. I won't ruin it for you, so if you do want to go watch my other Dress video, then do go watch that. I won't say any more on the matter. Anyway, but this time, this time in a different video, we dock onto our transfer stage once more. And taking use of its highly efficient and highly reliable engine, we set up our maneuver node and burn towards it. It's about time for this video to end, so let's let's actually get it done. We burn away from from uh, Juna and bringing our periapsis on the sun down just below the Kerbin altitude. We have to actually stop off at the maneuver node, burn again, shift another, what's that, 300? I can't see from here, my resolution on the preview is too low. Like 300 meters per second delta V, probably something closer to that number. And surprisingly, we must have spent, this stage must have at least like 8 kilometers per second of delta V. It's really quite remarkable. Miracable. Miracable. A new word, ladies and gentlemen, Miracable. Say it to your friends, Miracable, Miracable, word of the month. Really? How interesting, how Miracable. This is what happens when you stream for five hours in a day and then think you can go record more videos. This is what happens. I was playing Try for an hour and a half and then I was playing KSP for three hours and then now I've been doing this for the past 18 minutes or so. I really enjoy it, but unfortunately the quality of my vocabulary just decreases until I'm making up words. Miracle. Sheesh. Anyway, getting down into the atmosphere, ignoring halves, interesting, miracle ranting. <laughs> the ship comes down and starts burning up really high in the atmosphere as well. Miracably high in the atmosphere. God damn. <laughs> It starts flaming out about 30 kilometers high, which suggests that we're traveling extremely fast, and indeed we are. <laughs> it's just lucky that I'm not using deadly re-entry. And also I deploy the parachutes at a speed that has got to be far too fast for their operating cap capabilities, but they don't seem to mind. So bring it down once more, the flames licking the base of our craft. We can perhaps do a little bit of an edit just to save time and bring the craft down closer to the water. The parachutes deploy and we realize, oh balls, we didn't, yeah, we, we didn't activate those modules back in orbit, didn't we? Well, that's some signs we missed out on. I guess we might as well do it in the ocean. <sighs> oh, a bit of a waste. There was a goo module underneath there that we didn't do either. Oh, well, we could have got a bit more science, but... I don't think it would have been necessary. 
And in fact, it doesn't seem like it was at all. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. We gained 1,048 science. Quite. Quite. Come on, Harvey, get it right. You can do it. Quite. You can do it. Come on, you can do it. R-E-M-A-K. Uh, no, wait. Okay. All right, ready. Remarkable. Remarkable. Thank you very much for watching this episode of, of Career Mode. Ladies and gentlemen, it was indeed quite remarkable. Damn it!